drug epidemic coupled with the ongoing homeless problem in New York really leading to a public health crisis that requires immediate attention. The pandemic prompted a rise in attacks in Midtown, an increase in the homeless population across the city, violence in Washington Square Park, which led to a curfew over the summer, and of course the open air drug market issues that we continue to see in Harlem. Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer says enough is enough. She joins us this morning with her plan of action. Good morning, Borough President. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Good morning. Great to be here. Yeah, good to see you on this Monday morning. Now, you sent a letter to the commissioners uh, of the NYPD, uh, the Health Department, and Human Resources Administration on Friday detailing exactly what the problems were and where help was needed. So has anybody even responded to you yet? We have not had response. We obviously are concerned about Midtown. We're concerned about 125th Street in East Harlem and Harlem. We're concerned about Sarah D. Roosevelt Park, where there was a stabbing and a murder. And we're also con just concerned we've been working on Washington Square Park. Mm -hmm. Those are just some of the places where there is drug abuse, homelessness, and we can use some of the money that you know the Attorney General Tish James smartly got from the Sackler family for opioids. That has been given to Mayor de Blasio millions and millions of dollars and that should be used to address some of these issues. Yeah, and some of these locations, you know, we've been reporting on for quite some time that people like you have been shouting from the rooftop saying they need help and attention. I want to dive into that money you just spoke out about because you're requesting that some of that $150 million secured by the Attorney General as part of the opioid settlement be distributed to combat these issues. You outlined a three-pronged approach. Let me just detail it real quick. Centered around interagency coordination as well as funding for social services and health assessment teams who would address mental health and substance abuse. So, Borough President, what is the timeline then? Because these are good points here for making it a reality. Now, the timeline should be immediate because the money is there and there are models. The Times Square Alliance has a model working with social service and the police. Um, in East Harlem, we would even like something, a bathroom that is staffed. Ryan Park has a bathroom that is staffed and it works extremely well. We also want to have, I have to say in some cases, uh, just the sanitation issues, power washing. Um, we want to make sure that there is, in some cases, well-trained police in the 2-5 precinct. Mm -hmm. And as you indicated on the list, police going out need to go with mental health. You need both. And there are so many organizations that can work on this. In Midtown, you've got Fountain House, you've got the Midtown Court. We also want on the Uptown, where there is a conflagration of uh, many kinds of um, drug treatment programs, homeless shelters, right. and also the methadone centers on 125th Street. We don't want any more of the methadone centers, but those who are there, we need to get addressed. Yeah. All the outline is there, we just need the funding. Borough President, let's talk about gun violence. It is a very obvious public safety issue right now across the city. There were two shootings in Times Square at the start of the summer and the recent gun violence in Harlem. So how do you plan to address that? Well, obviously we work with the mayor. We work with the community-based organizations. There are, um, I mean, the only way I know, obviously, is to work on a national front to deal with getting rid of the guns. But while we're dealing with still having that uh, pipeline up uh, I-95, there are a couple mm -hmm. of things. They do need to have more support for these families that are uh, frustrated and not able to deal with their kids. I also think that you need to have many, many more violent interrupters to deal with the gangs. Yeah. Much of it is gang, and we need to have some much more gang interrupters, which would be the folks who deal with violence. Yeah, they know. have to be well funded. They have to be out on the streets. You also need the police officers. It's mm -hmm. a combination. I have to say, I think that the resources are there, but they have to get the kinds of interagency coordination, exactly. as you indicated, and they need the funding. Well, that's what I'm saying, because it sounds like every person we interview, they all say the same points, violence interrupters and putting the resources out there. It's a matter of why hasn't it happened yet and why isn't nobody speaking to each other. But there's also this point that I want to bring up, and that was the curfew imposed at Washington Square Park over the summer along with the work of several agencies cut back on a lot of the problems there, right? That curfew. Oh, in Washington so do, we, no, do, do we need ahead, to sorry. take that curfew model to other parts of the city or is that too extreme? I don't know. Washington Square Park is a very defined area. I don't know if you could have a curfew in East Harlem or a curfew in Midtown. But I know in Washington Square Park, we have put together seven different drug treatment 
police, parks, settlement houses, and they're all working together 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. That's an example. It's working. It's not perfect, but the mm -hmm. parks department indicates it's much better in terms of those who have a drug substance abuse issue. So you have to have a coordinated, I don't know how else to say it, right. aspect. The curfew might work in a defined area, like a park, but I don't think it works in the entire neighborhood. All right. Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer, appreciate your time. Keep us posted on this all, okay? Thank you. Thank you.